Hello Indie Game fans, this video is brought to you by Sheeps.io, which, as you can tell from the opening seconds of the trailer, is a factorial style construction title which has you building production chains, combining shapes and creating new products. It is a lot more minimal in presentation as compared to its inspiration, which does help its case as a chill building game. Mine, cut and create increasingly complex shapes to progress as you unlock new machines and upgrades to speed up your production. This was initially only available on itch.io and was playable in browser, but it is now also available on Steam, although according to the developer, if you do email them with proof of purchase on itch, you can get a Steam key as well, which is probably the best way to do it since you can get both a DRM free key and the developer gets a better percentage of the money. Love me this style of factory building game, so this one is a no-brainer, with even more content to come, despite it not being in early access. This content patch video for me highlights some updates of mostly early access titles which are definitely worth a revisit, with a number of surprise DLCs and interesting additions, beginning with Scrap Mechanic Survival. If you can believe it, this sandbox crafting title has been in early access since 2016 and has slowly garnered quite the audience with 46,000 Steam reviews and an overall rating of very positive. The survival mode patch, obviously, adds set mode to the game, with hunger, thirst and health to worry about on top of an army of robotic enemies. Given that their latest patch notes states version 0.4.5, this seems like it still has a ways to go by really nailing it in terms of the art, mechanics and systems. One of my favourite in-development action roguelites features yet again in another one of these videos with Undermine Golden Core Update which has you delving into the deepest parts of the Undermine filled with rivers of molten gold, a fire lord, boss and new enemies. If you have played this game, you will know how important gold is to the gameplay loop, so I'm excited to delve in with 150 new encounters across all areas which should significantly vary up the experience. Founder's Fortune is a pretty cool colony sim that some people may have overlooked and their latest update adds professions like Miner, Forester, Doctor and so on which have their own progression skill trees. This one was a pleasant surprise since after showing off some art for this, Darkest Dungeon The Butcher's Circus launched in May as a free DLC to the 4 year old game. Strangely enough, this adds the Butcher's Circle to the Hamlet which allows for 4v4 competitive PvP action which is super weird for a roguelite title. Don't be worried, 
you don't have to risk your campaign heroes in this mode, and while people have been complaining that high dodge, stress inflicting builds are the only viable way to play, and hence the mode needs balancing, I'm just happy that more stuff is being added while we wait for the sequel. The Darkest Dungeon This one has been humming along quietly, but Volcanoids is the first person survival base building crafting game like Satisfactory but steampunk, and the latest update of course adds in co-op, which if you have played any survival game with friends, you'll know how crazy and fun it can get. A no-brainer and a solid addition, it's full steam ahead for this. As recently shown off in the Monster Taming Games video, the Underworld update for Monster Sanctuary adds a whole new biome to explore and is the first trailer video that shows off the reworked artwork and sprites which did actually come in quite a little while back. The Foreboding Underworld is a forbidden area that has been isolated for hundreds of years and is the latest in terms of story progression so it's for experienced keepers only. Seven new spooky monsters have been added, with an increased level cap and even tier 5 attacks for all monsters, as this game barrels towards the completion of its story campaign. The automation focused base building title Autonauts has built up quite an audience with its charming, blocky aesthetics and super compelling gameplay loop of having to program robots to automate your production. The most significant update yet is Age of Enlightenment, adding, strangely enough, automated art of all things. Other highlights include ethical silk production, a space pot for you to export your goods to other planets, and the attainment of cultural ascendance, so pretty weird but cool and in line with this game. A smaller but very interesting tactics title from February is Mainframe Defenders, where you need a squad of 4 prototypes to fight against a virus in the mainframe with a very retro 80s PC terminal aesthetics. Meltdown doesn't seem to be named after any particular feature added, but does include new mission types, enemies, playable units, mechanics, items and more. This one was something which I missed last month in the midst of my Hades addiction, but Curse of the Dead Gods got its first major update, and it's a big one which I'll leave to the developers. It's been around one month since we launched an early access, and it's been great to see how the community has responded to the updates. The team at Past Deck Games is working hard to bring constant improvements and enhancements. This time we're showing off the major Cursed Temple update, which contains a lot of new features and even more replayability. Thought you knew the temple well? Don't be so sure, as there are now even more room variations in the Jaguar section. Traps, treasure chests, and secret rooms all have more diversity, making the temple much less predictable. We've also introduced new skins for weapons to give them more distinctive looks, as well as unique weapons dropped from the Blood Hunter and the Moon Twin Champions. Of course, Based on your feedback, we're also constantly improving the gameplay balance for all aspects to achieve a challenging but fair experience for everyone. These offer a new way to play, combining cool gameplay modifiers for thematic runs, often much more unpredictable and difficult than standard mode. 
For example, you might start with a permanent haste buff, which increases your move speed, but the corpses of all enemies are passively infested with spawning monsters. In another Eternal Curse mode, you may take less damage while staying in the dark, but more damage in the light. There's a lot of potential and ideas to explore with this feature, and we can't wait to see how you overcome some of the creative and deadly challenges we have lined up for each level of difficulty in Curse of the Dead Gods. Spicing things up even further, we've doubled the number of curses in the game with this update to bring more surprises to each of your runs. We worked to bring new ways to play for your greed and other cool twists on existing game mechanics. Get the trapped treasure curse and be attacked with a powerful blow each time you open a chest. However, if you're able to parry this trap, you might get bonus rewards. With another new curse, watch your surroundings carefully as all flame-spewing statues will be triggered automatically when you enter their site. Remember, each curse acts like a double-edged sword in Curse of the Dead Gods, allowing you to use their effects to your advantage with careful play. As always, this update features a bunch of balance changes and fixes based on the feedback of our amazing community. This includes new cursed weapons and relics, Looking ahead to the upcoming months, we're excited to announce huge plans for the next major update, which will take place in a dark and poisonous part of the temple, challenging you to face new monsters, traps, bosses, and worse, along with new loot, curses, and fun ways to play. Thank you for your feedback and amazing support. Follow our social media accounts and Steam Early Access page for more information soon. Curse of the Dead Gods is available on Early Access on PC. See you next time. How did I end up in this strange world with these strange creatures? That crafty fox spirit really played a trick on me. Oh, I feel odd. I cannot seem to place my... A pleasant but strange surprise was A Tofu Tale Mystery of the Metaverse. This puzzle game with Japanese mythology influencers released in December 2019 without much fanfare and despite not being in early access, the content patch got released anyway. With a cool art style and hit scratching puzzles, it may be worth looking into. I guess I must use my wits and the world around me to get out of here. But what fascinating monsters there are here. The terribly territorial Tengu. The brutish bouncers of the disco club. The Oni. The stubborn, creepy Kappa creatures. <laughs> Club. There are tubular eye treats and even radder music. Various challenges await you yet, Mr. Tofu. You have a lot to learn about the surreal worlds of us fox spirits. Don't worry, you tricky fox. I'll overcome your puzzle-filled realms. has shattered our enemy's will. Now they are fit to be conquered. Last year's Age of Wonders Planetfall was a pretty well-received sci-fi 4X title, so naturally, it got an expansion titled Invasions, where space lizard men have entered the fray and have come to lay their claim to the galaxy. There's a new playable faction, one more NPC race, and the ultimate late game challenge in the form of the invading Voidbringers, adding even more to an already fantastic game. And now, our most ancient of enemies seeks to destroy our dawn. Let them try. Another wholesome direct entry makes the list with kind words million letter updates, marking 1 million letters sent in this very wholesome title that lets you throw your worries out into the world to get some kind, encouraging words in return. More stickers, a new room and some quality of life changes adds more to this warm, fuzzy title.
And of course, I had to make a special mention about Terraria Journey's End when covering new releases since this massive content patch overhauls many of the existing systems and items and even adds in a whole bunch of new things with over 1,000 new items, new bosses and more. The change log itself is 45 pages long which is insane, so kudos to the developers for putting it out for free to their massive fanbase accumulated over 9 years. This is also a little bit bittersweet since no major updates are planned moving forward, but I cannot thank developer Relogic enough for setting the gold standard in games as a service. I know that channel subscriber Ben Prince will be interested in this one since the retro FPS Wrath Aeon of Ruin got a second major content update and together with that, the physical box copy was announced as well, which comes with an art book, a poster, and five metal figurines, so it sure looks like a pretty sweet one. Second appearance for Endzone A World Apart, which seems like they're hitting all their major milestones on their road map at a steady clip this time adding scenarios which are self-contained missions with a clear objective to be met, adding some structure to this gorgeous, if depressing, post-apocalyptic city builder. Get the very first scenario, called The Long Summer. As you might already know, preparation is key to survival in this unforgiving world. Set up your food and water supply first to provide for adequate nourishment before Mother Nature strikes back. Now let's have a look at the weather forecast. Yeah, well, seems like it's going to be a long summer. I hope our preparation comes to fruition. This long-lasting drought is going to stretch us to the limit. Our water and food stocks are almost gone, but there's still some hope for a quick breather before the next wave hits us. Mark my words, irrigation plants are essential for survival. They will keep the fields and orchards moist and green. You won't last long during a drought without it. This drought is still holding up and has already taken its toll. We must stick together and work hard to get through this blistering heat wave. Take a look at the weather forecast. Rainy days are just around the corner. Time to recover before the next drought hits us. We made it this far, so we won't back down now. Stay strong, fellow survivors. Isaac, my dear friend, you don't know what you've done with that cursed music box. Song of Horror, not to be confused with World of Horror, which by the way did also get a content patch but did not have a trailer, is a third-person fixed camera survival horror game released in October last year. Mr. Farber. Good. Time to play detective. Episode 5 marks the conclusion of the story, converting the base game to the complete edition, but certainly one for early Resident Evil fans. One of the hidden gems from 2019 is the action RPG steeped in Slavic myths, Yaga, which released the Bad Fate update in May.
While the game initially had a bad luck system, affected by the choices that you made in-game and how it aligned or conflicted with the general version of Divan that you created so far, players did complain that the unfairness of the bad luck was just a little too much, leading to the overhaul of the system. Additionally, retweaked and rebalanced crafting, combat, enemies, tools, etc. are all in this due to the feedback from players, with quality of life changes like fast travel, flying ovens, secret caves, running, and more. While I did enjoy this game back when it was first released, these upgrades and enhancements are certainly welcome, so a great time to check it out if you have not. Yaga. North Guard has been a standout strategy title for me since I enjoyed the Norse mythology theme and the combination of the 4X and RTS genres. Or it has been getting peak DLC in the form of more playable clans in the months since launch, this latest update introduces the map editor and more modding support, so a very community-friendly move that should help to sustain and build the fan base, hopefully for years to come. The family-focused pixel art action roguelite, Children of Morta, was one of the best indie games of 2019, so I was pleasantly surprised to see the Setting Sun In update, which adds a new game plus mode and even more story content and cutscenes, and again, not even an early access title. I can see the amount of love put into this game, taking the number one spot. To see more of the big picture, Check out these awesome videos and I will see you after the jump.